Taylor. Hello and welcome to Tinker Taylor Solder Fry, the Let's Try program here on the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name is Ian Horner and joining me today is Kathleen DeVere. Hi, except this is not a let's try. This is definitely going to be a let's succeed because I'm here today. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I've tested this recipe like twice to make sure it's good. I have also tested my recipe. Hey, so, all right. Yeah, we're... This is not a let's try. This is a let's do and let's crush it. Let's do it well. Yeah, today we're going to be uh, doing all cooking. Uh, no, no, no cooking of... beside uh, t uh, touchy electronics. No, tr no chances of cross contamination from lead poisoning. Uh, what are you going to be cooking for us today? Well, I'm cooking something that sounds incredibly fancy, but is actually really easy and can be done in one pod because that's sort of the extent of our cooking setup here. It's chicken, apples, and cream a la Normandy. It is actually, this is a rare thing for me, this is basically, a, we're going to be working through a recipe from uh, Dory Greenspan's book, Around My French Table. This is a fantastic cookbook if you are inclined to buy cookbooks, which I am not usually, but occasionally if the quality is very high I will. Uh, I really recommend this one. I have not made anything in this that was bad. Everything in it is good. Yeah, flipping through the recipes earlier with you, we were mentioning a few of them and they just sound so delicious each and every one of them. The, the best thing about this is this is uh, French cuisine. If we can get the overhead shot for a second. Mm -hmm. um, which sounds, oh my god, fancy, buttery, oh my god, look at all these words. But the thing is most of these ingredients, it's probably hard to read, but it's like fresh orange pork tenderloin, oranges, Pork tenderloin, unsalted butter, oil, onion, seeds of cardamom pods. That's it. Okay, so you... Like, the, the recipes are all, like, they're not, like, the more is more kind of, like, super fancy blog recipe cookbooks that mm -hmm. tend to be going around these days where it's like, I would like to make this, but I don't have literally 18 ingredients, only, like, four of which I keep in my cupboard. You can like, only buy in New York and certain... Or I have to go to a specialty really, market mm. and track down. Though There's a lot of those cookbooks around, and they're bad. They're usually published by people who got famous on Instagram. I'm sure the recipes are fine, but they're just not But they're, they're, not, not, they're not good cookbooks not for, for everyone. I want to shake up my weekly dinner routine, <laughs> right? Like, you know, so this is a good cookbook that I recommend. I've done this recipe several times. Uh, and it's really simple, and I'll go over it with you when I actually start going. Mm -hmm. Ian, what are you doing? I am going to be working off of a recipe from my favorite site on the internet. Whenever it comes to looking for food recipes, there mm -hmm. are two people I trust. And one is more of a homunculus of, of uh, multiple people. Okay. One of them is Alton Brown. That's right. Alton Brown, best recipes. Yes. If you need a recipe for something, check, Siri, uh, check Alton Brown's website, Good Eats, first. Yeah, Good Eats is first. Second is anytime I'm looking for something new or something experimental or something to be proved correct, Serious Eats. Serious Eats. is I almost said Serious Eats. I yep. got them mixed up because I also love that website. Another good one, I really like this blog, uh, The Kitchen, K-I-T-C-H-N. Yeah. No N, no I. Mm -hmm. The Kitchen. Because it was it's old enough that it was like, you know, Tumblr, just mm -hmm. drop a random vowel from your name. But The Kitchen also has really good... Um, yeah. But, uh, anyhow, yeah. yeah. So the, the recipes from uh, from Serious Eats because they were doing a uh, a face off between pressure cookers and slow cookers, and uh, interesting giving reasons why you probably just wanted for most cases you mm -hmm. want to ditch your slow cooker for a pressure cooker. That's that's interesting because I have a slow cooker. I was uh, I requested and was given it, but uh, having done many many slow cooker recipes, I have found exactly two that I'm willing to repeat. Mm -hmm. One Alton Brown slow cooker uh, steel cut oatmeal, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is a really really just nice basic um, beef and garlic and rosemary stew recipe because I find that um, slow cookers tend to uh, certainly they're hands off, but they don't do much for enhancing the flavor. You're, you're right on the nose as to what they found out, and actually one of the, you, your steel cutouts yeah. would be just fine to stay in the slow cooker forever. Okay. But the uh, stew, you should really take that same recipe and try putting it in a pressure cooker. Well, the reason being is that the pressure cookers mm -hmm. have a higher temperature, mm -hmm. which means you can get browning, which means you can actually So get I don't have to brown the stew meat first. And you can actually get proper caramelization. Yeah, because that's the problem with your... Um, uh, the thing is, though, good slow cooker recipes are usually adapted especially for slow cookers and that they add a lot of things like balsamic vinegar and yep. other salty things to enhance the sort of umami flavor of the recipe. Because if you just throw it in as is, it'll just be watery and not have a lot of flavor unless you brown your meat first. And then you're sort of getting away from the purpose of why you got a slow cooker in the first and place. That's the other reason why slow cookers ha are a problem, is that they make things watery. Because it's a self... Uh, it's just recombining the water. It boils off and then drips back down, mm -hmm. but it never gets a chance to caramelize. It never turns into proper gravy or sauce. Correct. 
but the pressure cooker takes care of that as well by forcing the liquid into what you're working with. I'm, I'm excited. So what are you making in your pressure cooker? I'm making risotto. Holy shit! Yeah. Okay, I make a mean risotto and let me just say, this is just our friendly host banter. Mm -hmm. Risotto takes a long time to do correctly. There's a lot of stirring involved. Yes, that's what I thought too. Wow. And, uh, I tried a variant of this recipe out last week with the uh, mushroom. Mm. And it was fantastic. Well, but I'm, yeah, let's just... I, I will... Do you, have you had my risotto? I have. It's it, pretty damn it good. It's pretty fantastic. Um, I will be judging it. If, if this is good risotto, I'll buy myself or I'll put a pressure cooker on my birthday. I'll make I'm one other caveat out. to what I'm doing here, too, mm -hmm. is that with the exception of chicken broth, mm -hmm. which you can substitute for oh. vegetable broth... Wait. One second. Keep talking. My risotto today will be fully vegan. Hey, did you mention substituting vegetable, but you want to preserve maybe the chickeny flavor? Can I get the overhead again? Ooh. One second. This little package here is Kathleen's secret recipe. This is McCormick all vegetable bouillon chicken style. If I have to, uh, I have a lot of vegetarian friends, and sometimes Sweet. you want to make something that will taste like chicken but is, e is able to be served. This bouillon's great. It's almost indistinguishable from chicken broth because most like bouillon or chicken bouillon because most bouillon is just salt and oil anyhow, <laughs> and it's vegetarian friendly. So if you're like, I want to cut down the meat or I want to make something for a vegetarian friend, this is the shit to pick up. It is so good. It's better than most chicken broth. I, I'm not a vegetarian. Graham's not a vegetarian. I buy this exclusively. This is my bouillon go-to. So there's your cooking pro tip. <laughs> well played. Well, let's get into the prep here, because I think we both have a certain amount of preparation to do for these recipes. Correct. There's much chopping on my mm -hmm. end. And there's not much on mine. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. So yeah, oh, let's... let me go over what you're going to need for this. Um, for my recipe... Oh, and actually we should mention that we'll be posting our recipes to the, the Loading Ready Run forums under Tinker Taylor Solder Fry after the show uh, at some point. Mm -hmm. Hopefully soon so you can get the recipes there. Begin oral okay. recipe. <laughs> if you want to make this, this, you will need the following ingredients. Chicken breasts. My recipe calls for like three to four. I have two here because that's what I pulled out of my freezer earlier. It's actually still a little frozen so I'm going to chop up my vegetables first. Uh, you need apples. It says like one medium, but these are two quite small apples. These are whatever was in season. These are ambrosia. Um, if you're cooking with apples, you want an apple that will hold its firmness well. And ambrosia, despite being a sweet apple, has a very good texture for cooking, and I do recommend it. Don't recommend Red Delicious. Uh, Red Delicious will turn to mush. Even if it's on sale, Spartan's also bad. Don't Red Delicious for anything. Um, if you're going to cook and you're, and you're like unsure of what apple will hold its texture, and I really like ambrosias. If those, if those aren't available, Granny Smith is always a good go-to, but they are a little bit tartar. But there's a reason they're pie apples. Uh, you'll need an onion. This is one yellow onion. You will need mushrooms. This is uh, the leftovers of some mushrooms that I got at Costco that need to get used up. You'll need olive oil, salt and pepper. You will need chicken broth, or if you can make chicken bouillon and turn it into broth if you're cheap. And at home, like I do, because uh, this is like three. This was like three fifty, and the whole package of bouillon cubes I showed you there was the same price. Uh, you will need heavy cream. Now you're like, but my store doesn't sell heavy cream. Heavy cream is a very European thing. Look for whipping cream. <laughs> so that's thirty three percent milk fat, and you're like, oh god, that's very fatty. But there's not much going in. And you will need some butter. Uh, this recipe also calls for uh, Calvados brandy, which I don't have, and I'm going to skip. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. Calvados brandy I would not want to be putting inside of a... That, that would be going directly into me if I that mean, was here. I mean, like, it does not... Ca it calls for, like, two tablespoons. But, like, I'm not going to go out and buy a bottle of brandy uh, yeah. just for that. Uh, another good, a good substitution, if you might have that, would be some, uh, some marsala, some fortified cooking wine, some cheap sherry. Mm -hmm. All of that is good. Uh, anyhow... And, oh, and flour, which I brought from home. Ian, what is your recipe? What is your thing called for? My recipe calls for six tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Yeah, we should have coordinated and just bought our own I know. one thing of olive oil. Uh, one medium shallot, which uh, this I guess is medium. I don't think they're. I don't think shallots come in large. Uh, That's like one of the largest shallots I've ever seen. Tbh. <laughs> Three cloves of garlic, minced. Two cups of Risotto style rice, be it arborio or violane nano. 
So, Ian, where do you, is it important that you use the risotto style rice? Can, you can't substitute this, can you? you? Yeah, you, sh well, because it's super short grain. You can substitute it. And it's very starchy. You will get an inferior product, and I would say you, could, you should only substitute it with Japanese sushi style rice. Because that's also short grained and starchy. Exactly. Do not attempt using any form of a basmati or a. Uh, or jasmine. Jasmine or any. Whatever Indian you happen to have laying Chinese around. Style rice. No Uncle Ben. It's not expensive. I think this plus the two extra cups that I used before cost me $5. It's, it's, it sounds fancy, but it's. It's worth it to get a good risotto. So would you like to explain what a clove of garlic is? What a clove of garlic is. Are you relaying chat questions? Yes. Okay, yeah. This is a head of garlic. It is it is made up of many cloves. Uh, one of these orbs or uh, units is a clove of garlic. The thing that looks like a gargoyle's toenail. Yeah, so that's one clove. That's two cloves. And there's three cloves of, eh. Yeah, well, it'll be three cloves of garlic. If the if the sometimes the cloves that come off are very small, if that's the case, use more garlic. Yep. No one's no one should complain about having too much garlic. Well, people only complain about garlic if you add it right at the end and don't cook it and mm -hmm. it's got that like very strong raw taste which nobody likes. But if it goes in early, it'll have a lovely mild flavor and, and it will pick up your dish. I, I, I liken it to one of those John Waters quotes too. If, if they complain about too much garlic, maybe it's time to get some new friends. Wow. John um, Waters. Yeah, he was he was not messing around. No. Uh, three quarters of a cup of dry sake. Don't break the bank on that. Get it cans just fine. So what if you didn't want to make? Could now this all the alcohol is going to burn off, right? Yes, that's so, the idea. You can probably substitute white wine or cooking wine. Um, I find it very weird that a Japanese uh, alcoholic beverage is going into this very Italian sounding. <laughs> Rice dish. That's because we're going to you. Uh, we're going to be boosting up the umami here in just a second All because right. we need also two tablespoons of soy sauce. Ah, I see where this is going because it's cooking so quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And one quarter cup of mild white or yellow miso paste. This is a very Asian risotto. Yeah, it's. I, I like to think of it as more of an Axis collaboration. <laughs> wow. Hey, Ian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what if you were? What if you were a? Uh, is there any broth going into this? There is broth going into this. So okay. That's where we were talking about the chicken versus vegetable earlier. Right. Um, what if you're a teetotaler and you really don't want to use any kind of alcohol, not even cooking wine? Ooh, I. There are some people who are straight edge enough that they won't even cook with alcohol. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I'm not of that uh, persuasion, so I'm not sure what I would substitute that with. Would you have a suggestion? Um. I know it would take out some of the flavor. Mm -hmm. I would honestly, if you're that concerned about alcohol, I would go with water or I would dilute a little bit of apple juice in water, which I know apple juice is sweet. I'm talking like maybe a, like a quarter cup of apple juice per one cup yeah, of water. I think you're probably right. You definitely- it, It'll add more sugar to it, but alcohol has sugar, has a lot of sugars in it. And I wouldn't worry about trying to substitute the, the wine with, uh, with water. If, if anything, you've got you're going to have enough water in this recipe to begin with. So you could how much how much uh, water is going or how much wine is going? Three quarters in? of a cup. Okay, I would definitely substitute that if you really don't want to use wine. Yeah. But I would do say half a cup of water and a quarter cup of apple juice, which I think would make your recipe a little sweeter than intended. But the this will like. There's sugar in alcohol, so yeah. you don't want to like just go straight water. And you're only going to be cut cooking 14% off of it, so. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I think that might be a random question. I didn't mean to put you on the spot no. there, but I, there are some people who don't even want to cook it's with worth, alcohol. It's, it's worth thinking about. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so that said, four cups of vegetable or chicken broth. Um, as you say, it's usually just fat and salt, so I go with the cheapest stuff I have unless I want to get really fancy, at which point I will make my own Four stock. cups? Yeah. yeah. See, this is, this, is, uh, this is interesting. We just which, definitely should have coordinated our ingredients ahead of time. That is something I can do in the, that we might actually want to do in the future, is I go through a uh, episode where we pressure cook some stock for each of us to keep in the Ooh. freezer. Uh, and finally, or second to finally, uh, lemon juice, Oop, which I may have forgotten to bring. That can probably be eliminated because that's only a half a teaspoon. Hang on, do we not have lemon juice in the in the office fridge? We do. We can use that. We might have a little bit. And kosher salt. I brought salt. Perfect. I also <laughs> brought salt. I also brought salt. 
I like to sprinkle my kosher. Mm. But didn't bring my fancy Alton Brown salt uh, salt holder. Okay, uh, so yeah, my job is just to mince this garlic and shallot. So there's been an awful lot of uh, questions in the chat, uh, mm -hmm. things along the lines of, by slow cooker, do you also mean a crock pot? And yes. Yeah, that's synonymous. Yeah, crock pot is a, uh, is a brand name, much like Kleenex. I was about to say, as Kleenex is to disposable tissue. Exactly. Mm. Um, and also, uh, there's questions about, ooh, what about getting an Instant Pot? Instant Pot is a, is a brand name for a... Uh, Electric pressure cooker. Exactly. And also, I would go so far as to say that it's probably one of the most popular pressure cookers online right now, <laughs> because everybody's freaking talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage you to buy an Instant Pot, not because I own one, but because they're a Canadian company. We really should have Amazon affiliate links set up for these <laughs> episodes. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even kidding. It's true. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is get some water boiling for that stock, which I had a extension cord sent this way. Do you need me to hand that to you? No, okay. I'm off camera it's, right now. It's a let's try. Let's try to get the extension cord. Uh, yeah, the, the brand name of your pressure cooker, it doesn't really matter all that much. The modern ones these days are not your, your grandmother's pressure cooker, which you put on the stove, and then you had to cool down by running cold water over it before you were able to release the pressure. There will be very little chance of explosion today. Yeah, stovetop pressure cookers have gotten very um, safe as well. Uh, and most people, I guess, recommend, if you're going to do a lot of things like browning and stuff, they say, uh, it's not just browning, it's like another thing like canning or something, you want the stovetop one for that reason, but an electric one does perfectly good. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're just cooking, and you, you, if you want the pressure cooker for the convenience, which is what a lot of people want it for, and why one of the reasons why it works so well as a replacement for a slow cooker, an electric one's going to do you well. A slow cooker is like, do I want to spend my 45 minutes prepping my recipe in the morning, or do I want to do it in the evening after I get home from work? <laughs> like, where do I have the most energy, right? And for me, actually, the morning is actually really irritating, because I have to try and figure out a way to distract Penelope uh, to do all, this, all of this cooking. Uh, so uh, another question uh, mm -hmm. for Kathleen. Uh, yes. Can you elaborate on your on your uh, chopping strategy here? My chopping strategy is I just need sort of a rough dice, so I'm not doing anything particularly fancy. This is a this is a nice knife. I recommend if you're going to do any cooking, go out and get yourself a good sharp knife. My knives actually do need to be sharpened. It's not as sharp as it could be. Um, the less work you have to do to chop, the better. So what I'm doing is I've 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 sort of peeled and cored my yes. apples without paying too much attention to what I'm doing. And I'm doing sort of a medium fine, because I don't want to like cook these apples too much. Like I don't want them to like dissipate into like slime, right? You want chunks of apple. Which is why you want the nice and firm. Uh, nice which apple. is why you want a firm apple. But I also don't want like big uncooked chunks of apple. Although I did a curry and like I got like a jar. I've one thing I've never been able to cook well is curry, probably because I, I look at all of like the the cream and butter you're supposed to put into a good curry sauce, and I like get turned off. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't do it. And then I just go to a restaurant and order that much cream and butter without knowing it. But um, uh, I put apples into into uh, like a like a chicken and cardamom curry, and it was really good. Hmm. And I left those a little bigger, so they're like more firm chunks of apple. When I was uh, living in Japan, I found that the house brand curry suggested putting apples in. I thought, that's a nice idea. And yeah, ended up tasting fairly decent. Yeah, apples. Secret, secret, uh, good secret tech in curry. Notice you and I are both chopping with our fingers curled under, uh, because uh, in the few sort of like, you don't want to, oh, I'm gonna, this is going to make my, you don't want to chop like this. <laughs> Oh, Bija adjusting our camera slightly. Sorry, yeah. One second. Ian, can you go, can you sew some shitty chopping? Oh, yeah, that's gonna happen here in a second. Well, no, but like where you shouldn't be holding your fingers? So, yeah, do not do this. Do not hold your fingers out no. that way. That's a good way to cut that end off. You wanna curl around and use your uh, knuckle if you need to support the blade, and use the, the back ends of your fingers on what you're holding. It will take a little getting used to if you want to do it like that, but it's worth it. The cat's paw, I've heard it referred to as. Do, 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 do. If you have fingernails, it helps to 
to dig the fingernails in, I imagine, to hold the thing in place. Yeah, the key is you just want your fingers curling away from the knife edge rather than poking okay. out. Um, I need to take a break because I didn't bring a lot of dishes from home. My mushrooms haven't been washed, and I was going to put my chopped vegetables into this container just to hold them. Oops. So I need to take my mushrooms to the sink, I need to wash them, and I need to rinse this out. Uh, so I'll be right back. You are now muted. Okay, I'll just continue to chop my garlic. It smells delicious in here. Oh yeah. It's going to be infuriating for whoever has to do a podcast here next. <laughs> I mean, it might be me. I don't know. <laughs> well, then you'll just have good memories. Okay. I don't like mincing garlic, but I also don't like using the pre-mashed stuff. Oh yeah? It's be, Minced garlic is, it's a convenience, but it is an extra expense. Mm. And you know, there's something meditative about mincing your garlic. I could spend some time mincing it finer, but I feel that initial slice, mm. if you get it thin enough, you're probably safer that way. Or probably safe. With, regards to how thin it needs to be. Yeah. You don't need to go uh, razor thin like they do on The Godfather. I know there's a lot of talk about whether or not you should use minced garlic and oil or whether you should actually, like, buying the jar at the store. I would say that buying the jar at the store is better than just buying garlic powder and trying to make that work. Oh god, garlic powder is not... Which, when, it's when, not when the same thing. Yeah, garlic powder has its place. Yeah. When, usually when you're baking, but if you if a recipe calls for minced garlic, yeah. God for God's sake, yeah, just either buy the jar or yeah, you're, mince you're it way yourself. better off. It's it's. Um, I know a lot of. I mean, a lot of professional chefs will be like, I will never touch that because I, you know, they have the skills and they can handle it. If you are not confident or comfortable and you don't really feel like chopping your own garlic all the time, then go buy the go buy the thing. It's, it's not, a bit of a pain. Let's yeah. be honest. Mincing yeah. garlic is not. It's, it's more work that needs to be done. Well, you should never feel ashamed about saying, I'm going to take a bit of an easy way yeah. out on this one. Oh my god, well, well, <laughs> let's just stop and think for a second about what, this episode, what we're doing this episode, which is making risotto a very difficult and long and, long and difficult recipe, yeah. and making it in a pressure cooker so that it takes five minutes. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Don't be ashamed of saving time. In fact, you don't have to, if you make this for your friends or your significant other, you don't have to tell them that you only took five minutes to make it. It's true. Don't lie to them, but... No. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep over this hot stove for days. You have a pressure cooker and you didn't. <laughs> You're right. I don't even know why I'm talking <laughs> like this. <laughs> oh, I don't use shallots enough, but I do love them. Uh, perhaps we do, I'll be right back. because I just, uh, I've been using paper. Do you both need one? Uh, no, we should be able to put one between us. You can share? Okay. Yep. That's a good fine mince. Actually, yeah, uh, it's been pointed out a few times in the chat, and I just saw Revenant77x point this out. They sell frozen minced garlic. If Ooh. you really want, just want to get in on, on the on the pre-made stuff, it's like you could buy the little ice cube tray looking things that will, you know, that's as good. You could. Yeah. I don't like, I don't have much room in my freezer. <laughs> oh, we could have actually just brought the compost bin. The compost bin smells bad. Oh, then yeah, no. it's actively composting. <laughs> That's not where it's supposed to compost. What a relief. Uh, anyhow. Mic back in? Yes. Yes, please. And that webcam is off by here. <laughs> That's okay. There, there. There's your webcam. So yeah, what I'm... Chopping the onion longitudinally first, leaving the base end just slightly connected, which helps hold it together for the lateral slices. 
and then you use the actual uh, curve of the onion to end up making the individual cubic sections. Let's talk mushrooms. Yeah. Here, I have a cremini mushroom, aka a mushroom I dropped because it's wet. Uh, aka a brown mushroom. What's the difference between brown and white mushrooms? Hey, what's up? Very little. Color? Uh, I. Oh, uh, Bij is on the phone, sorry. Uh, so these are some older mushrooms. I got these at Costco like maybe a week ago, and I was like, I should use these. No, I shouldn't. Tinker Taylor is coming up, and I need mushrooms for that, so I'm just going to leave them. Um, and definitely one of them, when I was washing it, started to sort of fall apart. Oh, no. That's old. Throw it out, even if it looks fine. Really don't use it. The rest are fine. But uh, keep that in mind. When you're, when you're mushroom. Mushrooms actually last quite a long time in the fridge as long as you don't let them dry out. Um, so I had that just covered in saran wrap and it was fine. Um, mm, okay. uh, your mileage may vary on this. I always cut the ends off my mushrooms because the, the stalk ends tend to be a little dried out. These aren't perhaps the freshest mushrooms, but they're also going to be sauteed with like butter and garlic, or sorry, with like butter and olive oil and like chicken broth and all sorts of shit. So you're not really going to taste it that much. So. Yeah, you know, some people like to pick out the stems of their mushrooms. I, f I think that's a waste of good mushroom, but, you know, I'll do some either way. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's a whole rigmarole, like, you should wash your mushrooms, you shouldn't wash your mushrooms. Nah, 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 nah. Just brush your mushrooms. Don't just brush your mushrooms. There's a lot of shit on there, literally. Boil your mushrooms. No, just wash them. <laughs> wash the dirt off. Don't brush it off. Unless they're a hundred percent like pure, no, even if they're like pure organic mushrooms, that just you really... means that it's organic shit that's on them. Yeah. So, uh, let's see here. I need to make some stock. This which means I need a tablespoon for every or a teaspoon for every cup, I believe. Yep. Not fancy. Bought at Bulk Barn, except for the initial one. Yeah, pro tip, if you need to buy spices, best idea is just buy one canister of spice and then refill it from your local bulk store. Yeah. Um, the cheapest way to buy a spice also is to um, look in the ethnic food section. Mm -hmm. uh, like the pepper will be literally a third of the price if it's got like Hindi on it. And it's the same thing. Like you, 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 like this recipe calls for cardamom. Like you go to like the, like the, the aisle that has like spices and like baking supplies, then you will pay like $6 for like, you know, 10 grams or something. You go to the, you go to like the ethnic food section of the same supermarket or maybe just like a specialty market and it will be ludicrously cheaper. So. Make sure I'm doing the right amount of, four cups, good. So some spices are better if they've been vacuum packed, though. Like all spices are better, though, if you end up toasting them. Correct. There's four cups. Perfect. Uh, the best way to get herbs is to find somebody who can grow herbs in their garden yes. and just ask you to dry some, and or ask them to dry some for you. Okay, I'm wondering when I should start cooking, if we can have to maybe put these together at around the same time. Uh, or if that's even worth attempting. It's probably not worth attempting. Okay. Yeah, well, yes, because this device will keep things warm. Oh, yeah. So you can time it to my, like, significantly more capricious. Yeah. So this is Ian's pressure cooker. I think the recipe that's actually got me on the pressure cooker uh, bandwagon, as it was, was a uh, chicken soup and dumplings recipe. I don't typically like dumplings, but were the, uh, the dumplings were good? Oh yeah. The, really? Uh, Not just hunks of wretched dough floating yeah, on top? They, they, were, they were hunks of dough that had had the, the flavor of the chicken stock, which was made all at once in the pot. Mm. Just infused, it pushed into them. Too too often I have had dumplings that are just like, hello, here is some light leaf that's a dose that's flavored on the outside and then nothing on the inside. Yeah, these these were these were supple, tender nuggets of, of flavor. Of, uh, of starch and goodness. Yeah. All right, let's uh, start up by getting our olive oil in there, which if I recall was four, six tablespoons. So the astute among our viewers may have noticed that I'm not actually measuring 
how many mushrooms I'm cutting up. The 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 amount of mushrooms that this recipe calls for, I believe, is an incredibly esoteric number. I think it's eight. Uh, I am just cutting up what I had. Um, most of the time when it's like, you need X stuff. Don't sweat it if you don't think your onion's the right size. Or, you know, it's fine. It might be a little bit more mushroomy. It might be a little less mushroomy. <coughs> Here's Ian's pro tip about olive oil. If you can't tell the difference between a good extra virgin olive oil and a regular extra virgin olive oil, it doesn't matter. So many of them are just uh, t terrible, terrible dilutions anyways. Oh yeah. That it's, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I uh, this is the brand I buy. They're mm -hmm. Terra Delicia Organic Tunisian Olive Oil. And I buy it because you can buy two liters for $17 mm -hmm. at Costco. And it's a really good uh, uh, intersection between price and quality. Yeah, that was a good, this one is the one that was on sale for $6 for a liter at uh, the market on Yates. That's a very good price for the market on Yates. Yes. And actually San Remo, despite being kind of a cheap brand, is very is a generally very good. I like their pasta sauce, I like their tomatoes. Uh, I like everything they make because it's usually just very simple and it's actually made, in, it's actually Italian. Yeah. So we're gonna get this uh, on high here. We'll put high, start. And that's going to begin the, uh, ooh, actually no, we're not gonna use the high, we're gonna use the brown command. So what brand is your pressure cooker? It is a Sultan. Excellent. And it, the reason I have it, I didn't even buy it, was that my mother found it on clearance for, I think, something around $25. It was very, very little. Wow. Very inexpensive on clearance. Yes. But it seems to do all the things that a magic pot does, and it, it makes pressure. That's all I want it to do. Half the time you don't actually, brand stuff is not super important. No, no. <laughs> Which is the argument I get into with people about their, uh, people who have, not the KitchenAid mix, yeah, the KitchenAid mixers. Oh God, yeah, I don't own a KitchenAid mixer. I don't do enough baking. I'd kind of mm -hmm. want one just because they're the thing and they last really well, mm -hmm. but. I own a Kenwood mixer. How is from it? The 19, well, it was built, bought in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. I recently found out by watching uh, James May's The Reassembler uh -huh. that the design for it is from, I think, the 50s. And it is fantastic. And it is 450 watts of goodness. Wow. And I was just in London Drugs the other day and I could not find a KitchenAid mixer even approaching that level of power. So there's two ways of chopping onions. If um, people were watching, I just sort of like sliced it in half and then it in quarters and then diced it because I just need a rough dice here. That's kind of hard to do if you don't know what you're doing with an onion. So for this one, I sliced it in half, but didn't go all the way through the onion. And then I did some sort of angle, or not angle, like some uh, vertical cuts hey, up and down. That's the method I was using earlier that I mentioned. Yeah. Oh, did you do while I was off camera? Yeah, it well, must have been. But yeah, that's a good good recap on that. So that's easier if you're not used to like gripping slippery slippery onions or you need to do a finer dice. I personally don't really care that much. <laughs> and then what chefs never tell you is they're like, this is how to cut your onion. They're like, what do I do with all this like knob of onion that's too small to do that to again? So you just put it, on the side. put it on the side and go like this. Is typically what I do. And you end up with some longer pieces. That's a bit of a thick, like, skin, skin type piece, not as crispy. Mm, okay, I'm not sure if you can see from above here, but the oil's starting to get a little bit shimmery, which is a good sign. Slide that, to your right. Yeah, there we go. Which is a good sign that it's starting to get hot. Um, I like to just toss in, like, a small piece of onion at this point just to test to see if it's ready. It is not. No. Oh, man, Ian, do you remember the last time I was... Uh, I was here and I said, people are afraid to cook with heat. Uh, it's so true. People are always like, well, I should probably cook at no more than four, right? No. On my burner, because I don't want it to get too hot and I don't want to burn my food. It's actually harder to burn food than you think. Burning, it's not even necessarily that bad if you catch it early. It's just a little bit of caramelization. Mm -hmm. and what people, Which is what you want. And what people are really bad at doing is cooking their food on too low a heat and everything is never, and you never get anything crispy. Things get uh, dried out. Yeah, they just kind of get soggy after a while. Your burner goes up to 10. 
Uh, you know what I fry meat on? Usually if I just need to sear it on the outside, like eight. Yeah. Turn it up real high. I turn it up to 10, get my pa pan to temperature, then bring it down. <laughs> then you have to start worrying about oil smoke points. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't worry too much about oil smoke points. I do. Yeah. I have a very sensitive fire detector. <laughs> I've set it off a couple times. I need to go wash my hands because I just blew my nose. I've disconnected my fire detector. If there's a fire in my kitchen while I'm, while I'm uh, cooking, I'm going to know about it. Plug it back in when I'm done cooking. <laughs> Don't get any ideas about my home life. Okay, we're getting some dancing here inside the pot with the onion. Oh, that is nothing. That's not in focus. It's okay. Trying so hard, but it... check out the umami. Yeah. All right, let's uh, oop, not step on our microphone cord. Now we're going to want to cook this for about two minutes here until everything's just translucent. Ah, it can be heard. Okay. Hey Siri, two minute timer. Mm. Can you push that in a bit to your right hand? Yeah. Thank you. So we don't want to brown this. We just want to get it translucent, cooked through, nice and tender. And then we're going to need some rice. Will you be slicing anything else? Nope. Oh, so you can Maybe probably I can clear move that away. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Beach. Thank you. Uh, I hadn't thought of this, so I'm going to need to use my quarter cup. I only brought so many of my. I have a full set of measuring cups here. Too. Oh, perfect. But I think we'll be fine with this. Oh, that smells lovely. If you have not cooked with shallots before, they are slightly different than onions. It's, it's hard to describe, but... They're both milder than onions, and but they have a more intense flavor. Mm -hmm. So, they're, well, I mean, they're different. Yeah, they taste a bit wilder, I think. Yeah. I think the way of describing it. I mean, like, unfortunately, they taste like a shallot. Yeah. But it's worth it. Like, don't, like if the recipe calls for shallots, unless shallots are massively expensive, get the shallots. This one was 59 cents. Yeah. So it's not going to break the bank. And it is going to change the flavor. So what All I'm doing right. with my chicken now is I'm just cutting it into, like, thinner fillets because I want this to cook quickly. Um, and my chicken is still, like, very slightly frozen from my freezer. So... And so, uh, if you're going to do this with full breasts, you'll probably be able just to leave your chicken in the pan while you're doing all of these steps. I'm going to actually decant my chicken uh, because I want it to uh, want it to uh, not get incredibly tough and chewy. People are always worried about undercooking chicken, but overcooked chicken is the worst. Um, yep. It's like got such a terrible texture. Okay, time to move, add the risotto rice itself. Now this is something you're... This is the important part. Two... Three... Four... Ah, shoot. Five... Six... Seven... And eight... Quarters of a cup makes two cups. Bij, I made a terrible mistake. Oh no! Well... It's not that bad. I should have put salt and pepper into this flour mixture. It's, it's the recipe calls to dredge. I have a bag, so I'm going to shake it because yeah, that's way nice. faster. That's my, that's your pr cooking pro Four tip. But I need to wash the raw chicken off my hands. Makes Four sense again. Yeah. Uh, so I will mute you. Could you also come and unplug my microphone? So I can because totally I do, do that. not want to touch our microphones with <laughs> raw chicken yes. hands. All right. Which is good because at this point I need to continuously be stirring this rice. All right. So, so that you're on mute. Because you, you're not actually, okay. you don't want to burn the rice, but you do want to toast it. Which means you want to keep it moving constantly. And the key when cooking the rice is going to be, I set a four minute timer because that's the, uh, the rough time it takes. 
for the rice to uh, to get to the stage you want it at, at. The key is that you want your rice to look somewhat like an ice cube, or a bad ice cube. Really translucent around the edges. Let's bring that in a little more to your right. And yeah, really translucent around the edges and kind of hazy in the center. I'll give you a... Can we try that with the webcam maybe? I'll give you an example when we've, uh, w w once we get closer to that stage okay. and bring it up to the webcam. But ooh, this is already starting to smell lovely. It is overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, we're really just infusing flavor directly into these rice grains right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Well, let's see if we can bring the, uh, the webcam up there. We're going to wait on questions a little bit until things calm down here. <laughs> so in case anyone's wondering why I haven't been asking, that's why. Oh, no, I, I can take a couple questions at this point. If you wanted to, uh, if you're somebody who enjoys the taste of onions, mm -hmm. I'm going to find the actual question again. But unable to stand the texture of biting into them. Or even other alliums, I guess, like like that kind of thing. Any re recommendations on how to get that flavor, like how to save that flavor? Ooh. Now, that's maybe one of those areas where you might want to look into powdered onion. I, the question, I need some clarification. Do you hate the the texture of cooked onions, or do you hate the texture of uh, of raw onions? Because that does actually change my... Uh, my suggestions there. If, if you, well, I'll just give both of the answers. We'll wait for fan out then. Uh, yeah. But yeah, go right ahead. If you do, if you don't like cooked onions, then really spend a lot more time uh, chopping your onions up into uh, dicing them into smaller pieces, and in the hopes that you can actually get them to just dissolve while cooking. If you can't stand uh, raw onion, then that's probably where the onion powder is going to be helpful. Mm. There's also no real substitute to raw onion. You could also just maybe try cooking your onions in oil and then just spooning the onion out. I mean, you, you might get enough flavor that way. I guess you could probably take a raw onion and you could mince it so fine that none of the actual whatever is left, even, and then you could mash it. Even God would be cut. <laughs> If you want to switch to the webcam there, we can probably okay, get an interesting shot. <laughs> it's certainly steamy. So steamy. <laughs> That's a great shot. I mean, it's blurring a bit, but... <laughs> yeah. So now we're starting to get a little bit toasty on the onions here. But the, uh, the grains are coming along nicely, some of them. Let's have a brief talk about food safety. Oh, one <laughs> second. Let's have a brief talk about food safety. You've seen me leave to wash my hands twice. You've seen me pick up this paper, the, this bag that I might have touched raw chicken with, with a paper towel, because I don't want to have to leave to wash my hands again. Mm -hmm. Why am I, am I being obsessive? Can I quickly interject here? Just oh, yes. because I do need to start moving on with this recipe. Oh, one oh. second. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, this is what we're looking for. It's not quite Trans coming into focus yet. But translucent edges, hazy center. That's going to be pretty impossible to get focused properly, but... So, Kathleen asks, am I being paranoid? Um, probably. Uh, if you've ever seen any old cooking shows with, like, like the, like, perhaps on the Twitch one, they, they had, uh, Obviously, the French chef, they had a bunch of Jacques Pepin. They'll see them handling raw fish and chicken. They'll wipe their hands on a towel. They'll go to they'll cook something else. They'll stir. They'll wipe their hands on the same towel. They'll do something else. And the germaphobe in me panics because I've had food poisoning. Then again, Jacques Pepin is still alive, and Julia Child lived to her 90s, so clearly they were doing something right. Mm. Um, but it's always a really good idea to um, wash your hands, especially after handling meat. Uh, especially if you're going to be handling vegetables and stuff like that that aren't going to be cooked as much. Um, separate cutting boards, not a bad idea. Yeah, or if you don't have separate cutting boards, do what I do. Do your vegetables before you do your meat. Just, just, it's much safer. It's, it's much nicer. Always wash. Be paranoid. 
This is definitely 100% good advice, especially if you're cooking for someone else. If you're cooking for yourself, you do you, but be aware of the risks. No, get, get into good habits even if you're cooking for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. Like, I, yeah, I've never given anybody food poisoning, and I don't intend to give myself or my family food poisoning. <laughs> I just don't want to, to, to scare people off of experimenting with raw, raw foods. No, but always wash, wash your hands after handling raw foods. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a difference between handling a raw chicken breast and having a, a blue rare steak. Yeah. All right, so Ian, what are you doing now? I'm cooking the sake until the smell of raw alcohol disappears. That is a very intense sound. Mm, and it's... Going right into your microphone. Oh, it, <laughs> but the smell of that cheap sake is going right up into these nostrils, too, mixing with the toasted rice and the So if this shallots. sounds good to you, imagine how it smells to us. Yeah, I think the minute they, perfect, they perfect smell -o vision in televisions, cooking shows are going to start rocketing in the ratings. Do you still have your knife here, Ian? I do. Can I borrow it? Yes, you may. I left my cleaned and soaked up knife in the, uh, in the kitchen, and I need a tablespoon of butter. I think we're just about there. So next I need to add the stock. And let's stir in the soy and miso paste. Ah. Let's see here. That's two teaspoons of soy. Yeah, you yep. Other one? No, nope, that one. I need to get the. Oh, my thing to the extension cord. There's, an, there's a second extension cord, Kathleen. Sorry. Is there? Yep, it's the orange one that's plugged into the wall there. Woohoo! I meant that for you. Okay, I can't smell any more alcohol, so let's add the soy. Two teaspoons. That was a good beep. That was normal. We're about to hear it beep again because I. Okay. And then a quarter cup of the soy, which I'm going to just kind of eyeball a bit. Sorry, miso. No, oh, yes, the miso, which is a different kind of soy. Mm. Uh, quarter of a cup. Let's just chop that off right about there. That looks about a quarter of a cup-ish. Well, it's on the overhead. Stir that in. I forgot to bring a spatula because oh I was in such a hurry. Can you just get me any like metal spoon? Yes. Uh, I'm going to be done with this fairly quickly. Oh, great. So, in fact, as soon as the miso is incorporated, you can have it. Sick. Hmm. You're definitely going to brown town. Do you think you would replace soy sauce with Worcestershire? No. Nope. They're not, not the, the same. Not no. the same thing at all. Now, if you could try it mm -hmm. and see what happens, but mm -mm. Mm -mm. Worcestershire sauce is full of uh, vinegar, mm -hmm. like uh, like um, malt vinegar. Um, but what you could substitute the soy for would be uh, Vietnamese fish sauce. Oh, because of all the umami. Yeah, what the reason we're adding the soy and the miso is to add umami to this, which is a replacement for the cheese, more than anything. Oh, there's no cheese in this. There's no cheese. Because it's vegan, yeah. right. There you go. Uh, you can wipe that down. We're going to add our chicken stock. Okay, that's in there. Now, next thing you want to do when you're making any type of rice dish is make sure that there's nothing in your pot uh, on the sides that's not under the water level. Sorry, preemptively I'm plugging myself because I'm going to have to go wash my hands again after this. Okay. 
Okay, and what we're going to do now, let's stop this because we're done browning. Here's the lid. We're going to secure that and lock it in place. Turn the thing on the switch on the top to pressure mode. And then we're going to close the pressure cooker and bring the temperature onto low, which is about 10 PSI. And we're going to cook that for five minutes. So I hit a low and then five and then start. And so that will turn the pressure cooker on. Start it. Start it pressurizing. I might need it again later, but that's fine. And then when it's pressurized, it'll count down from five. And in the meantime, I'm going to have myself a little drink. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, dressing the shot while we're doing this is kind of <laughs> weird, but. Yeah. Uh, the crema Greek yogurt container uh, that I used for the to hold my rice was because I was just experimenting with a some of you may remember in past shows the pizza recipe I did with the pizza crust. Well, I found another topping for my pizza that I love just about as much as regular pizza, and that's using it to create uh, using yogurt and lemon juice to create a sort of a paneer style cheese or here's a quick cheese. Mm. Use that as the sauce base for the pizza, and then a mixture of uh, chopped frozen spinach with onions and garlic on top, covered with yet more of that, that crema cheese and some mozzarella. And you've got a delicious uh, Greek slash Indian fusion style pizza. All right. That should be the last time I need to wash my hands. Boy, this looks like a lot of salt you're adding, Kathleen. Yes. But if you use kosher salt, it's not as salty as like iodized table salt, so you can add more. Mm, could yeah, have let the, that go a little longer. The, the amount of salt the level of salt between just enough salt and too much salt is almost razor thin. So, high heat, butter. Butter is great for browning. If we can get the overhead shot for a second. Uh, high heat means that I've actually got these nicely browned pieces of chicken. And you might think, oh, but your chicken will be all tough and dried out. No. Cook it quickly on high heat will lock the moisture in. Also, the, the flour will keep the, the moisture in the chicken. It'll sort of like make a little barrier. And the nice thing is about that is the leftover flour will help thicken my sauce. And uh, if you are going to do any kind of dredging, it's a really good way to add like a nice texture to your meat, but you have to cook it on high heat. You have to cook it fast. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just won't crisp it up. Yeah, otherwise you'll have the taste of raw flour in your food, and it will be gross and bad. Now, just as a, uh, as a tip thing out there, do you want to know the easiest way to make sure that you never overcook a chicken breast? Or uh, you can poach it. You can poach it. The easiest way is to brine it. Oh, yeah. Just 15 minutes uh, of keeping your chicken breasts in a salt solution, one, four tablespoons per cup, or four teaspoons per cup. And, uh, yeah. How hot could this possibly be? Not that hot. The uh, the chat is also pointing out sous vide. <laughs> That's a great way to not overcook a chicken. Uh, not. I don't think sous vide is meant for chicken. You wouldn't. <laughs> so, I mean, actually, no, not actually. Uh, sous vide, actually, from experience, can work great for chicken, but it's very time dependent. Right. It's not one of those things you can just leave in forever and it, it gets better, it gets more tender. Chicken will actually begin to rubberize fairly quickly after a certain amount of time. And yeah, there's nothing worse than a rubbery chicken. All right, so I've got my chicken 
I would say it's not 100% cooked, but it's going to cook more later. And what I don't want to do is cook it till it's done now because then it's going to get cooked again. Turn that down for a second so I can go through my recipe with you. So, all right, all of the stuff I've gone through. Now, we've got our, we're going to cook our vegetables now. And the cookbook does say, if you're feeling a little low on, yeah, I know. If you're feeling a little low on butter and oil, feel free to add more. Can you pass me, where'd yeah, my oil go? It's to your right, on the floor. Oh, there it is. If you want to lay down the, the, pan, the <laughs> pan on the trivet so it's not, well, it won't get any residual heat, but of course that's right. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm going to interject here briefly. Uh, Ian, the pressure cooker is uh, kicking noise right into your mic. Can you slide oh. it forward? No. Away from you? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Kathleen, go ahead. That's No worries. So uh, I'm not going to add any more butter because my pan is already very hot and butter will immediately brown and go gross. But you do want some oil. All these little brownie bits, that's flavor. <laughs> you want to reincorporate All right. that. So this is my previously chopped up apple onion mushroom. That noise is a good noise. Turn my pan back up. Now that I have something in there. Could you say the name of the cookbook again? Oh yeah. I'll even hold it up. This is Round My French Table by Dory Greenspan. It's a very good cookbook. Mm -hmm. I really like it. it. Gets the Kathleen stamp of approval. All right. Now that I actually have something in the pan, and it's not the butter's not immediately going to ignite and turn into something revolting. I am actually going to now add a bit more butter. Butter is flavor. Butter is life. This is not an everyday food, but that's okay. This is something you make when you want something a little fancier. It's not also to say that brown butter can't be a good thing. No, I mean brown stuff. butter is amazing. Oh, one of my favorite uh, chocolate chip cookie recipes calls for. Oh, brown a butter? Lot of brown butter. So, how much butter and oil should I add to this? Well, I added probably another tablespoon of each. Um, because what you want to do is, the cookbook says, uh, you want your additions glossy with butter and oil. You want them to be coated with it. Like, you don't want, like, a thin film. Uh, don't be one of those people who's like, I'm healthy and I saute everything in water. You'll never get a... That's oh, not sauteing at all. That's My, boiling. Uh... Not to name names, but I have uh, a very good friend of mine whose parents are very health conscious and no oil in the house. It was like, yeah, I need to do some, I need to do some meat, and it would be like just a little water at the bottom of the pan. It's not worth it. No. It doesn't add that many calories per serving. God, if you don't want oil, get a silicone spray <laughs> and die. <laughs> not to say that there there are people who cannot eat oil, and I'm yeah. Now, well, by the same token, I have I have very high cholesterol genetically, mm -hmm. and they tried warning me off of oil. And what I've learned is that that doesn't help. There's a, fat is not bad for you in the way that people think it is. And there, there's there's a certain, well, there's good fats and bad fats, which true. is very important. There's a certain argument to be said too for quality of life. Mm -hmm. Make your choices, people. What the? Uh, hmm. Why is this? Hmm. There we are. All right, so this should be cooking. It's not sauteing as much anymore because it's covered in oil and deliciousness. There it goes. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Cook for one minute, then pour in the broth. I'm gonna leave it for a little longer than a minute because it wasn't quite a, it wasn't quite at a high temperature. Oh hey, I think my uh, the pressure cooker has come to pressure because it looks like it says two. Okay. See. When I did this at home, I was just like, yeah, 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 I know what I'm doing. But now that I'm doing it for the internet, I'm extremely concerned that I'm going yeah. to screw it up. I'm like, oh my god, I haven't tested the recipe enough. You're very aware of each step. Correct. All right, now that it's actually sizzling, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count this as my cooking starting one minute now. Because I really don't want to be like, yeah, it's cooked enough. You, like, yeah. Use a hot pan. I really can't stress that enough. It's like a common beginner mistake is you never cook, people don't cook anything hot. It took me years to get ballsy enough to use a hot pan. So here's, here's the question that I think I, I don't know if I've asked you this last time. Are you one of the oil first then heat or heat first then oil people? 
I alternates depending on what cooking step I'm on. Okay. You saw me add oil first and then heat to do the chicken. Like I put the oil in the pan and then I turned it on. Mm -hmm. Because it, uh, and, but here I had the hot pan and I just added more oil. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard arguments from both sides mm -hmm. and I've read I, articles on both ways. The if you're using an oil that has a low smoke point, but you want to cook with that oil in a hot pan, I would assume you would heat it first, put the oil in, and start cooking your food immediately. So the oil doesn't have a time to heat up to the point where it's smoking. Well, the other issue is this, this has to do with uh, whether or not you're using cast iron or non-stick pan. Mm. Yeah. Non-stick pan, you're not going to get any advantage. You can do it either way. But if you're using cast iron, your, your best bet is generally to actually heat the pan first, because that expands the... Uh, it expands the pores in the cast iron. This is an enameled coating on the cast iron, so, so there's no point. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have a very beloved cast iron pan, but I got rid of it because it was just really gross. I'd had it for years. Right. Um, and We've... I had not, I did not take care of it as well as one should have, but people were like, don't do pasta sauce and cast iron. It's like, no, just, just, just wash it afterwards. So we, we have hit uh, done on this. We're going to set it to warm. And we're going to release the pressure. Are we ready? Is it already done? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I'll, I'll need to check it and maybe reduce it a bit more. But I'm going to leave it on wide so we can see your expression. Actually, maybe we'll see how the camera's picking that up. Oh, it's not. Damn. All right, whatever. Nothing there either. Oh well. Just <laughs> watching the steam go right up into our overhead cameras. Yeah, that would have been a. Uh... You can hear Paul getting angry from here. <laughs> <laughs> and that is very hot. You do not want to be in the way of that, by the way. But how do you know, Ian? Shut up, I said. <laughs> I mean, it's steam, yes. right? Yeah. It will save the world. That was super ah, amazing. And the uh, the lock just dropped. So when this thing gets up to pressure, it actually pushes a small pin up, keeping the uh, keeping me from turning the lid. Oh, I see. Until the pressure has been reduced. Ooh, yes. All right, let's get an overhead. Okay. See, that beautiful work that Kathleen's doing and mm. that really, really liquidy thing that Ian that has created. It smells right, but as you can see, it's just a bit... That's not done. That's not done yet, but it'll, be, it'll get there. So we're going to turn this back on to steam mode. And then we'll just boil off that, uh, that excess moisture. But we're getting very close. Oh my god, it smells remarkable. Both of those things smell remarkable. Are you excited to eat this? Eat, I'm excited to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neither has had, nobody in this room has had dinner. So for those catching up on what I am doing, uh, I waited until my stuff had cooked for about a minute and a bit. It's not the end of the world if it goes for a little longer than a minute. Like, um, I did a fairly coarse dice on this. If you were, like, going to make a very fine puree, then you maybe, like, very, very fine dice like Ian did. Maybe then you want to observe that time limit. And then I added a third a cup of chicken broth, which is not much, so you don't want this to be watery and goopy. And then turned my uh, turned my heat down because uh, it, you want like a low simmer. Like you want it bubbling like it is, but you don't want it like aggressively bubbling. So I'll just see if you can see on the overhead there. Uh, oh, yeah. As you can see, that's a terrible place to hear. Let me pull aside some over here. That'll be better. See the liquid? There's quite a bit of liquid that's come off from the mushrooms and the apples, and it's definitely at a simmer, but a yeah. low simmer. A controlled cook. This is not something you can rush. So even though this is risotto, and you said it would be cooked in a pressure cooker, there is a, you are still doing the steaming and stirring step. Yeah. Okay, but it's just it's not taking you close to an hour. Of exactly. constant stirring. Oh, Ian, are you going to be constantly stirring this, or checking every so often and giving uh, it a good I'm stir? Probably gonna, I'm probably going to constantly stir this, but it's not going to take me more than five to seven minutes. Okay. This That's a huge time savings. Yeah. Like it's, this is basically just a finishing step. Uh, hey, chat, set me a timer for 
Mm, cook for about 10 minutes, but I've already cooked a couple minutes. So give me a timer for six minutes. So don't forget to in include the lag time. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for a confirmation. Man, I wonder if I can actually get chat to work the way Siri does on other things. Hey chat, send a message to Brendan Beach Deary saying, hello. Okay, the timer's been set. At this point, because you're only gonna, you, this is a rich, creamy, heavy dish. At this point, you can walk away and take your bag of salad and toss it with some like cranberries and blue cheese and a little bit of light dressing, which you can do with lemon, lemon juice, bal uh, balsamic vinegar, and olive oil, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm. Because this is a like you'll want to serve this on like some plain white rice. Like I wouldn't normally pot pair it with a very rich risotto or like some crusty bread just to soak up the flavor. If you have a look here, Kathleen, we're actually almost already at the stage where we need to be. Oh, wow. That's very impressive. If you are, uh, um, I think what Ian wanted mm. you to do, chat, was to send me messages at beach at mass or octodon.social. How, how is that working at, how, how is Mastodon working out for you? It exists. Fine. Nothing happens. I'm waiting for, like, the tech cognoscenti to be like, hey, we came out, and then they'll be like, great, and that's, that's half of the people I follow will now all of a sudden show up. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've got a few people on there, but... What I need, what I find, is that what I need is a method to accelerate my shit posting <laughs> so that I can actually then start a second account, because right now there's no easy way to tweet stuff from other, or, like, toot stuff from other things. I think everyone's also very, uh, doesn't want to do the whole cross-posting Yeah. Thing. Yeah, they don't want. There's a somebody has made a GitHub thing to post from Mastodon to Twitter if you want to. But yeah. I'm like, but that doesn't solve anything, because the idea is to start drawing the audience to Mastodon. Yeah. So whatever. I've, I've taken to using Mastodon to post about Mastodon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not on Mastodon. Don't worry about it for now. <laughs> it's not important right now. Yeah. It, it maybe I hope it is. Yeah. But yeah, you're, you're not missing anything out yet. I don't need to be the world's earliest adopter, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But I, I appreciate everybody else who is like who are Allure fans who has now followed uh, Ian and I both there. Yeah. Andrew's on there, which is great, but I haven't seen him post anything there recently. Oh, I love Andrew. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. I'd, I'd join a social network just for Andrew. I, I literally joined the instance I'm on because he said he was on it. I'm like, I'll join your instance. Why not? Graham is concerned whether there is a sprinkler system at the moon base or not, and I don't believe there is. There is not. Nope. So we're is that our Graham? That is our Graham. Texted me specifically just to ask, just to be sure, because I was like, when that steam came out, I was like, we're about to cause a problem. And we didn't. So yeah. everything's fine. There, and somebody sent me a message on Mastodon. Thank you very Perfect. much. Perfect. The system works. Hooray. Let's get an overhead shot of that again. Oh, look at that getting <gasps> thick. Mm -mm. And... Oh. Hey chat, tell me if Abe Vigoda is dead or not. Abe Vigoda is dead. You don't need chat for that. No, I, I got your back, Ian. I, I did. I did. It still is one of my favorite websites. Oh. Okay, I think that's now ready. We can just leave it at warm. So this is not perhaps like the most instant pot thing of all instant pot things, but considering... How long it takes to cook goddamn risotto? Yeah, it's it's greatly reduced the process from a so, hours long. Yeah. Pay attention to me all the time to yeah. Chop some I, stuff, put I, it in the pot. I need you to hold this baby and distract her yeah. for at least an hour because I'm making risotto for dinner. Yeah. Um, does this uh, recipe call for like butter to go in at the end to like cream it up and? No. Really no. interesting. I guess because it's it could be vegan, right? Yeah. I, I, the, the last one gave you the option for that, I believe, uh, of adding some cheese. I think I added just a bit of uh, Parmigiano well, a, a, Reggiano. A, a traditional risotto recipe does call for uh, Parmesan and butter at the end. Yeah. Quite a bit of it, because <laughs> that's what adds the deliciousness. Actually, I'm going to have a quick taste of this, just to make sure we're on track. For anyone asking, is there a... For, okay, so I had a question. Fuzzy math. Mastodon is a re is a re implementation of GNU Social. So yes, there's a desktop client for Linux. I'm almost sure of it. All right, back to the actual food. <laughs> of, of, of the beejiest things we could hear tonight, yes, there is a yes, there is a Linux desktop client because it's based on a GNU instance. Yeah, is probably well right technology up there. rather. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Look at both of those. Mm -hmm. Just. This is probably applier 
and mushroomier and onionier than it needs to be, but that's fine. That's all good stuff. When you're feeding a large group, it's best to bulk up on the cheap parts. Correct. All right, let's watch Ian taste that. Everyone stare at Ian while he eats food. Mm. Mm-hmm. Crunchy? No. Good. No. Thank God. You got Just, 30 seconds. It's, it's got that perfect... Me? Yeah. That perfect level oh, of sorry, toothiness. Sorry, chat. Of toothiness. Mm. But the flavor. I'd say you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, do you see how I was already readying the cream? Yeah. I have like a second sense for kitchen timers. I will walk in like 10 seconds before it goes all that the time. That was real good. All right. So then I'm going to turn this up after this. Yeah. Now I'm going to turn this up because I want to reduce my cream. Because I'm actually adding twice as much cream as I added chicken stock. Mm. Chicken stock's all lovely and reduced now. So I'm adding two-thirds of a cup of cream. Is that, and that is, by, that is by design in the recipe. Correct, yes. So this is heavy cream, a.k.a. whipping cream. And I'm going to turn this up. And now, so this is why you don't want to, like, you might be thinking, ah, I've evaporated all my chicken. There's no sauce. There's not going to be any sauce left. Okay. No, no, there's going to be plenty of sauce. It's going to be a rich, creamy sauce. And now I have to, and honestly, I probably could have started doing the, the reduction without having the chicken in already because I cut it so thin and it's only two breasts. Uh, so my chicken might end up a little overcooked, but I just really didn't want to have raw chicken. Mm. Um, and now I'm going to uh, cook this under high heat till it reduces, and cream reduces very, very well. <laughs> Not to be reductive. Yeah. Super Cookie says, I'd pay twenty one ninety nine for this. Uh, you probably would, actually. Yeah. yeah. At, at 21 Probably more like 23 depending on the restaurant you went to. They'd probably do a better job chopping the apple, though. Like, you'd probably have a finer dice there. And almost certainly what they'd do is they'd make the sauce without the chicken breasts in it and then mm -hmm. just have the chicken breasts ready to go in the back of the restaurant. Fancier mushrooms, probably. Oh, a, a blend of cremini and portobello. Cremini, portobello, and shiitake for even more mm -hmm. flavor, actually. Is there a flavor difference between your standard button mushroom and a cremini mushroom? Absolutely not. So like, it's all texture. It's te uh, cremini mushrooms are brown, Yeah. so I think they look better in this recipe, which is why I opted <laughs> to use them and why I tend to buy them, because um, I like stroganoff, and stroganoff is like this color as well. You can trick people into thinking they're shiitake. Um, <laughs> and cremini mushrooms are a little firmer, which makes them hold up in like long cooking sessions better, but they're usually the same price as button. And uh, they're good, but like they're good. Um, shiitake mushrooms, even though they're very like Japanese sounding, are also great because they have a lot of umami flavor. They pack a punch. <laughs> Lyra the Mighty asks, "Who is the main cook in each of your households?" Me. Uh, me. And me. Yeah. Yeah. Graham can cook. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong. Like he's not like every time he cooks, he is totally successful in doing it, and he's not like. I'm a bumbling guy who can't cook. Like, that's not Graham. Right. Uh, but I am a better cook, and I like to cook, so, like, when we get home from work, it is definitely, I am, and, like, I do all of the shopping and the meal planning, so. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what happens on our end between Corey and I as well. Like, it doesn't make sense to have somebody who's not as interested in it and uh, do all your meal prep and planning. Exactly. What Heather, what Heather and I generally do is that I'm the one cooking, and if I need somebody to do other things in the kitchen, it's like, can you make me a white sauce? Can you do this? Can you do that? It's like, yeah, I'll come in and I'll do those little things. I'll make the rice or I'll do this or I'll do whatever. She's like, she just wants to be assigned a task to do. Yeah, Graham is a great, uh, great uh, sous Coming. chef. Yeah. And he did that a lot before Penelope came along. And now his job is to distract <laughs> Penelope so yeah. I can get some cooking done. So if we go back to the, oh, we're on the overhead shot. You can see how much my sauce is reduced now. Ooh. So yeah, it's I'd, very much close to what someone would call a gravy or yeah. A sauce. Well, I mean, because we had all the 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 chicken is cooked in flour, and all of the we left, we didn't take out the oil, so there's a lot of like mm -hmm. brown flour at the bottom of the pan. That's gonna thicken so it up. That will help it thicken up, but also just the cream is gonna reduce yeah. well on its own. Now this is a thing to to remind people at home, <clears throat> at home about as well. But remember, when things are hot, they're going to be a little bit more liquidy. Yes. Like the minute you take that off the heat, it's going to start to set up a little bit 
faster as well. Yeah, when you're at the temperature you want to put it in your mouth, it will start to thicken a bit. Like, as you can see, this Correct. coming down off the boil, this is now just a a proper. Oh, neat. But how? Yeah, it's a, the the consistency of risotto. Cool. So how are you going to know when you? Because there's quite a bit of liquid here still, but how do you know when it's done? Why did you turn off the heat? Because when I go like this, it takes a while to run back in. That's a good consistency for a gravy or a sauce. You can see that's quite thick and uh, sort of holds its. Uh, Doesn't like run all together. Almost again. like a batter. Yeah, yeah or like a th uh, like a thin batter. Anyhow, that is that is good because like you're gonna want to like take a big serving of this vegetable stuff and add it over a starch, like a plain starch, or just eat it with a spoon. Or a fancy starch like risotto. Ooh, that would be. I don't know if they'll go together that well, <laughs> but I think we're ready. To, I'm ready to call this done. I've turned it off. Actually, if I, if I didn't know there wasn't mushrooms in this, I would say you were lying. It's a very mushroomy flavor. All right. Um, okay. Well, let's um, maybe take like a two minute break to get some plates. I think that's a good idea. We'll and then be, we'll taste our food. Yeah, we'll be right back after these short commercial messages. It's your boy, Ian. And, and your girl, Kathleen. <laughs> and we finished up our cooking and are oh, now that getting... that one was for you. Oh, great. Getting to the plate, which is nothing special. We we're uh, just putting food on tiny dishes because we don't have nice dishes here at the Mooner base. Well, we don't have fancy well, dishes. Well, we don't have large dishes. Yeah, yeah I, I gave us paper towel napkins. Yeah. Like now it's a social eating stream. Yep. Change the... All right. Can I in the middle? I don't think you can. No. So I'm very excited about this. Oh, hell, you can. Oh, well, we, then we just did. We just mm. did. Great. Now, the recipe book does say at the end, before you add your cream, you should check your salt and pepper. You might have seen me take a spoonful of food halfway through the sautéing process and eat it. It was fine. Like, yeah. it was a little salty. So I was like, I don't need to add any more salt and pepper. That what is do you, what do you wonderful. Think? Yay, thanks, Beige. Wow. I really like this recipe. It's not something you would eat all the time, because look how much cream was in it. And you might think that with all that apple, you're going to end up with something that's, like, cloying, and no. it's not. Even with a sweet apple, like an ambrosia, because there's so much, um... Uh, there's, like, the onions and the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And what I like about an ambrosia, even though it maybe is a little sweeter than you'd want for a recipe like this, is isn't the texture still good? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that is very nice. Oh, wow, that risotto. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. I think that actually matches pretty nicely. They're v two very different flavors. I, I like how they go together. Oh, the chicken is not overcooked. I was worried it would be overcooked. Mm. <laughs> All right, panic aside about my own dish. <laughs> mm. That's a lovely chicken. Mmm. That's very interesting. Mm. It's not what you expect for a risotto, right? It's, it's a no. very different flavor. No, it's different, but it's not as different as I was expecting, considering you added miso and, and sake mm -hmm. to this, right? Like, but I mean, you cook risotto with a white wine, white, traditional risotto with a white wine reduction at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So this is really just drier than what you would get out of white wine. Yeah. It's got the it's got the alcohol fla it's got a slight alcohol flavor, like a risotto does. I honestly don't miss the cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's different. I think I, I'd like to try this recipe, do some my, my own modifications, and make it cheese based. Mm. <clears throat> and just do it more like a traditional risotto. Mm -hmm. But I think you know should we again have some sort of a uh, a group meal, mm. and we need to, to bring our vegetarian friends and vegan friends into the. I think we can have a pot of this is great vegan risotto. The only thing I would think is that I know that I was like you don't add butter at the end. I would add a little bit of butter at the end, just for like the the silkiness. Mm -hmm. I uh, think you're right. We don't know that many vegan people. <laughs> um, I actually don't know any vegans. Mm. I'm very sorry that you have to get all mm. the chewing here, Chad. But I mean, <laughs> it's social eating, right? Mm -hmm. That's Dang. What Dang, that's that really good, Ian. I really like that. No, this this Normandy is going into my regular rotation, I think. It is so good! It, and it's easy. It was yeah. one pot. Like, honestly, and if you had, like, a sous chef who was, like, chopping 
while you like while you were doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it would be, it's only, it really only takes like maybe 20 minutes to pull together once you've got everything ready to go. If you're using a full chicken breast, you will need to um, cook it for a lot longer. Mm. Like I was just a very quick in and out, but. Yeah, but well, you can just, that means you just separate your chicken breast as you did here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, what, probably butterfly mine just like you did. Let's, really, yeah. let's break it down. That was an hour and a half of of cooking that we we did now it was two people and we're already eating two people yeah hour and a half but an hour and a half of expl explanatory cooking correct if we were just doing this at home it would probably go a little bit quicker and you could probably make um as was as kathleen mentioned in a, in a restaurant they would have the chicken breasts separate yeah you could probably start your sauce without the chicken breasts mm -hmm. and then as that's do going, your chicken breast in a different pan yep. yeah and then you can combine the two together at the end and that would cut off probably a third of the time yeah I'm sorry. I can't think of any way to speed up the risotto. No, that was already so hard. fast. <laughs> I'm amazed it's not crunchy. Because, mm -hmm. like, you've cooked risotto the traditional way. Mm -hmm. 35 minutes in, it's still crunchy. And you're like... How long do I have to stand here? I will never be free of this recipe. I will be 90, and there will be children I don't even recognize running around. And they'll be like, Great Grandma Ma, when is the risotto ready? <laughs> this is my Sisyphean task. Oh my god. Now, yeah, for the caveat that my sauce does not have the brandy in it, but I don't, like, I don't, I don't feel like it misses it terribly, like it would add another level of flavor, but... It would, it would just push it over into the, the realm of decadent, but this is still delicious. I've never once thought, you know what, I do buy a bottle of, like, uh, sherry mm -hmm. to cook with. The next time I do this, I'll do it with sherry, because sherry is cheap. Mm -hmm. Like brandy is not cheap to begin with, and proper Calvados apple brandy. Yeah, exactly. Is less so. No, well, the thing is, the, the reason the recipe calls for the apple brandy is because it's, it's got of apples the region. in it. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's probably cheaper in France than it is here. It is much cheaper. So the, the one area of France I've traveled somewhat extensively is the Normandy region. Hmm. And that's where I was introduced to Calvados. You didn't eat this while you were in Normandy? No, no. Actually, uh, what did I eat there? That was horse steak. How was it? I found it delicious. The women I was uh, there with were insulted. Why? Because they're beef-fed Albertan women who were there on a... Uh, but horse is like a fancy meat. It's I, like what you serve to fancy people. Like when you're like, welcome, look, I've laid out the horse. Right? This is what it means to be a little bit well-read. To know that you were being... Yes. You, treated well? You were being treated well and not... <laughs> and not yeah. insulted because you were being fed horse. Now, how did it, how did, how was it like texturally and flavor wise? Well, it was, it was cut thin. So not, not a big thick steak. Right. But it was, uh, it was, I think, it was cooked in gravy, or at least served with it. Okay. So it was very... So it was like a preparation sort of like yeah, this style. much like that. Very, uh, thin but tender, mm. but definitely not cooked to a rare state it was it was cooked through cooked through yeah. uh like gamey or not not interesting so it wasn't a horse they had to shoot no well i mean yes they, yeah. had to do, they had to do something the horse just wasn't coming by in the middle of the meal saying oh, are you enjoying me yeah <laughs> <laughs> on three legs yeah that's a really good risotto and it's not salty that's, I tasted it when it came out. They suggest you can add salt. Oh, no. No, nope, there's no reason to. Well, I mean, I don't, because miso paste is very salty, and mm -hmm. you had chicken broth. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't concerned it would be overly salty, because I didn't see you adding any other salt. But it's actually a good amount of, like, it's it's definitely, if you are watching your salt, maybe a low-sodium broth would be a better, mm -hmm. would be better here. Because a lot of the flavor is coming from that, that umami, mm -hmm. rather than the, just the, the salt itself. Yes, which is nice. I'm going to have more chicken and apple goo. Would you like more chicken and apple goo, Beige? I would indeed, yes please. Anyone who would like more risotto, please be my guest as well. I'll come around. <laughs> I would love a little more risotto too. Please. 
Yeah, when you do this recipe at home, feel free to bulk it up by adding more chicken and apples and mushrooms, or more apples and onion and mushroom than the recipe necessarily calls for, which is, I just sort of like, this looks like a good ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, like, I really like the chicken, but I think the best part is the sauce and the vegetables in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could probably do this with a pork. Yeah, you, you could. You could me. even, God, you could even do it with a tofu. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could. But do you want more chicken and apple stuff? Or are you good? Uh, I think I'll be good for that. All right, I'll have the bigger piece then. I have not eaten a whole lot today. <laughs> Penelope, uh, I had a lot of errands to run today. This is this is very off topic, but I guess it's social eating, so we can just mm -hmm. chat. I on Virage Sale, which is an app, I found somebody selling uh, four pieces of West German pottery for twenty bucks. Ooh! <laughs> so I had to go pick that up. It's like some flower pots. Um, but uh, Penelope ended up having a car nap, which meant I could not move her until she was ready to wake up. Oh no! Well, that's fine, but it also meant that uh, my lunch was uh, a pizza pretzel consumed in the front seat of my car. So I'm very hungry. Ooh. No. Mm. And if you go back to the overhead camera for a second. Yes, one second. Uh, lost my mouse. <laughs> we can see what, uh, remember what Ian was saying about the sauce thickening up now that it's had a chance to sit? It's mm -hmm. way thicker, it's not running at all. So, just as an example of what to look for when you're cooking. Oh, very good. Very good to show that off. So one of the wags in chat commented, yes, you could do it with tofu, but where would you find the tofu stock? You could do it with that vegetarian chicken stock that I showed you guys yep. at the beginning of the stream. And then all you've got left is the cream. Well, it'll never be a vegan dish. Do not do any kind of... Make I see sure a you lot can of... milk an almond. I've seen a lot of people who are like, but could I substitute insert plant milk here? No. There's a common cause of like recipe failure comments I've seen online. I took out the oil and I substituted almond milk for the cream and it just didn't work. It's like, no, uh, the, 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 the fats and the sugars in cream because mm -hmm. there's an incredible amount of lactose in cream as well are what help thicken this sauce and emulsify it and give it the, the silkiness and the texture. It's the protein in the milk that, yes. that causes that, that sort of emulsification to work. Mm -hmm. Cooking Whereas, is a chemical reaction. Yes. And if you substitute out chemicals in a chemical reaction, you don't get the same result. Correct. So, yeah, there's no, there's, there's very little natural fat in an almond milk or a soy or anything like that. And there's no, there's, there is protein in soy milk, but it's not the same kind. <laughs> The protein it'll turn into tofu. Mm hmm. Ooh, which would be interesting. It'll curdle. Which would actually be an interesting experiment to do on the show at some point. Do some tofu cooking? Tr well, tr making tofu from uh, soy milk. Can you do that? Oh, yeah. Ooh, I've never done that before. It requires a lot of press in it, doesn't it? Not really. What it involves is, is uh, chemicals. Hmm, okay. That's one of the four things on the screen. Chemicals? Tinker? Mm, right, I think it yes. falls under tinker? <laughs> probably not, unless you want to show people how to solder tofu. That's green, yes. I mean, when you first started this show, you were you intending for the fry to be cooking? Yes. Oh, okay, was, good. The, the whole idea was to have, to encompass all levels of creativity and mm. skill building. Would apple cider vinegar substitute uh, for the alcohol in the chicken Normandy? That might not be bad. It might not be bad. I'd be worried about the vinegar. Yeah, I'd be yeah because um, the reason I was making that face is like, is the vinegar going to curdle with the cream? I think you you really want if you were going to try it, definitely cut back on the amount that you're using. My concern. I mean, I think I'd be very concerned about the vinegar curdling the cream because mm -hmm. I mean that's kind of how you make cottage cheese is mm -hmm. you add an acid to milk and apple cider vinegar is like it's vinegar so it's quite a, it's acidic yeah um I think if you don't have like any kind of alcohol just skip it it mm -hmm. doesn't need it right like this is delicious if it's rich it's peppery if you're willing to try it though I'd like to hear the results I would be too afraid to try it <laughs> I might set a small pan aside just to just to do a test. Yeah. 
Would you like to hear the results of the injury poll? <laughs> yes. Sure. Okay, start from the bottom, or because there's like seven options. Yeah, roll, oh, yeah. From, roll slow, roll us from the bottom. Mm. All right. Not sure how, but all that's left of the moon base tomorrow is a crater that smells like fried foods. Three votes. Okay. They accidentally end up cooking each other's dishes by total chance. Three votes. <laughs> Kathleen finds out Ian has been dishonoring Nihonjin and takes action. <laughs> Six votes. Ian, just all of him, mm -hmm. 10 votes. Kathleen gets small cut on hand while cooking forever, giving the Lur crew a taste for blood, 13 votes. You 13 people have no faith. In second place, they discover that Beach will, in fact, blend, uh, 19 mm -hmm. votes. And the winner overall with 24 votes, the cooking will go fine, but then Ian will bust at the Dreamcast and it will catch fire. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you know, do that. Dreamcast isn't here. I think for the injury poll, I think a much safer bet would be Kathleen somehow burns herself because did you see me like moving yep. around the chicken in the pan? Just went, there were a few hot bubbling of, oil. <laughs> I'm surprised Beach eats the whole thing wasn't on the list. No, but there's been an awful lot of comments in the chat as I started getting served food. So. Oh well, that's not very nice. Can I have a bit more risotto, Ian? Yes, certainly. I don't mind. It's like because it's mostly been like, oh, for once, Beach actually eats the whole thing, and I'm glad that Second? some people oh, that's know, finally cottoned on to. Bee Gees, the whole thing isn't like, this is what's going to happen. It's, it's literally, this is a challenge. Bee Gees will eat the whole thing, or he won't, and he'll be ashamed. Oh. And as we prove him, I've never eaten the whole thing. Yeah, not you once. even tapped out of the lettuce. I had to tap out of the lettuce, yeah. You guys went hard. Now, to be fair, I actually quite like iceberg lettuce. I was glad that we didn't go with, like, a romaine. Hmm. I wish we had washed them oh, before. Oh, romaine would have been way too bitter. I should have started from the inside first. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're going to wrap it up for this episode at this point. Beej, if you want to uh, give us the... All the subs? Subscription. I can yes. totally do that. One second, please. Oh, you might need to turn on the iPad, too. Yeah, there is a... Uh, a a procedure? Yeah, I need to find the, the procedure to do that properly. Mm -hmm. Sub well, listing while, is what I'm supposed to click While on. you're doing that, I will remind people that... Uh, Content continues forever here on the Mighty Loading Ready Live Video Entertainment Network. Tomorrow, we have 18 games and counting, where... No, we don't. Tomorrow is New Day Tuesday. Correct. Graham and Paul are playing Shovel Knight, the new Shovel Knight. Oh, hey, that's going to be fun. Um, um, I don't know what it's called. No, and I think that's... I, I remember hearing something about a, another type of utensil. But huh? you'll see it tomorrow. Huh? Yeah. Oh. So, something or other that night that was... A spoon, maybe? Pitchfork night. Pitchfork could be. He will be uh, weighing. He'll be smiting enemies and weighing in on the Radiohead back catalog. Mm -hmm. Pitchfork night. The point is that will be happening tomorrow on Wednesday. We will have crossing the streams as usual with uh, people playing Worms WMD. Oh sweet. Yeah, we're going to be re 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 revisiting that Thursday. Uh, what is going on Thursday? I don't remember. That's 18 games and counting. Yes, that is 18 games and counting. Who, that'll, be and that'll be Paul and James playing whatever the 18th most popular game on Twitch is. Let's hope it's Persona 5 so I can just come in and play Persona 5. Mm -hmm. But I do think they are taking a, uh, a break from, from Talking, Talking Simulator. Simulator. Yep, because no Talking Simulator this week. Coming up on Friday will be the Almond Cat pre-pre-release. Almond Cat. Almond Cat. Not Almond Cat. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it on purpose, aren't you? <laughs> I am now. <laughs> I got your subs. You ready to go? Yeah. One kit pre-pre release, and of course on Saturday we'll be loading ready live. Thank you so much Ooh, for watching. Wait. Let me just say, Almond Cat pre-pre release. Our special guests are Josh Lee Kwai of the Command Zone, mm. Christine Sprankle, Ooh. famous uh, Magic cosplayer, uh, uh, MTG MTG streamer Iliad Ilya mm -hmm. Ilion. Sorry, otherwise known as Cameron, so we can have Battle of the Camerons. Which we will be having. And from Wizards, special guest, Aaron Forsyth. What? Who will be ruining us all. He's a name I know. Yeah. That's amazing. A famous magic man, Aaron Forsyth. Fantastic. Uh, also a very good player. We are all good. <laughs> He's just going to grind us into the dirt. What one would hope to say. Oh, Watch and Play this week is actually a Let's Nope, too, because they're right. doing... Watch and Play is a Let's Nope because Graham's on New Day Tuesday, Tuesday. and he can't work Tuesday and Wednesday because then I would never get to any work done. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Beach, hit us up with today's subs. We'd like to thank WJMCK for seven months saying food. Yes. And IIDI -I -I for 11 months. Konbanwa minasan. Uh, Dasilis for six months saying, look at all this cool technology. 
Uh, Himule for six months says simple recipes are the best recipes. Here comes Slurp E with ten months. Alton Brown plus Sirius eats homunculus. That's terrifying. Yeah. And delicious. Blargnant, Blargant for four months says Stir Risotto was a way for Italian grandmothers to get Bambini to stay still for 40 minutes at a time. <laughs> probably correct. Yeah, probably. Roy Etham has subscribed for three months saying hacking with food almost as good as hacking with solder. But you can put it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. That lady in plaid has subscribed for two months. Thank you, that lady in plaid. Wombats1010 has subscribed for t five months, which is half of ten. Fuzzy Math has subscribed for two months. Just fuzzy math. Texan Reverend has subscribed for 12 months saying this is looking much tastier than the dog food I cooked in my induction trip recently. Oh no, I'm sorry. Thank you, Texan Reverend, for the cooktop, yeah. by the way. Uh, CJ Caesar for, has subscribed for four months. And Mr. Prototype has subscribed for two months, been falling asleep to TTSF replays to de-stress from vinyls. Y'all keep what you're doing what you're doing. It's the best. Yay, thank you, Good Mr. Prototype. Pusherman555 five, 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 has resubscribed for seven months. He says, always glad to catch TTSF. Glad to have you here. Jacob Reed is a new Patreon supporter. Thank you. Thank you for joining that Patreon. Dark Knocked for four months says, cool technology. Cool technology. Suspended Disbelief has subscribed for seven months. Remaining suspiciously silent. Kikizzi has subscribed for six months saying, can Ian mod the Dreamcast into another induction cooktop on purpose? Mm, I want to keep that Dreamcast. Yeah. And we want to thank... For those 150 bits, Senorodrod and Ghost Ghost Waz. Ghost Waz and S Senor Rod Rod. Senor Rod Rod. Oh. I get it now. Yeah. Thank you so much for those bits. Those bits, the no bits. bits. So if you haven't already, check out check us out at loadingreadyrun.com for our schedule and all the great shows. Thank you for supporting us here on Twitch and those of you who choose to support us at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. We'll see you guys in another fortnight with more creativity of something or another. Maybe I'll probably work on some music. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, we said at the beginning of the stream, I'll say it at the end in case you missed the beginning, the recipes are going to get posted in the Loading Ready Run forums. Correct. So keep an eye for them there. So thank you again so much for watching tonight, and we will see you next time. Ever forward. Never learning. Hello. For those of you who stuck around, I'm going to make something too. Get rid of that and that. Well, you should have probably bought better celery at this point, but if you didn't, that's fine. You're going to want to take your, uh, your peanut butter and get it right in the crevice. Use a lot of peanut butter because I don't think people use a you know, peanuts are good for you. Um, oil. I wouldn't think too much about the oil, you know, like this is a treat, you're treating yourself. And when you've done that, the trick is uh, cranberries. Don't go with raisins, go with cranberries. And you're going to want to decorate that just kind of like, you want it to be rustic, you know, you want it to feel as if it's like something that uh, your mother threw together for you after you came home from, uh, from school. And then to finish it, uh, I like to use a good finishing salt, like a Himalayan pink salt, because it's real pretty. Because I use natural peanut butter that has no salt or sugar in it, and that's why I use sweetened cranberries, and that's why I also use uh, extra salt at the end. And there you have it. Ants on a log. Just a thing to satisfy the four-year-old and you. Have a good night.